Damien here with Fig Boot on Pens, uh, back again with another ink review. Uh, this time around, I have an ink from Monteverde that is part of their Noir line. Uh, what I have is the Mercury Noir. Uh, there's 10 different inks in the line, and you can purchase all 10 as a set, or you can pick them up individually. Uh, this ink was provided to me by Yaffa Brands, who are the distributor for Monteverde, as well as a long list of other brands. Uh, in order to take a closer look at this interesting ink, Let's head over here to camera two. So here is the Mercury Noir ink bottle. Um, it's interesting because uh, as I mentioned, this can be picked up in or out of a set and there's absolutely no branding on this bottle whatsoever. Um, that uh, Now if it's fine if it's part of a box set, but it's a bit odd when you pick up one by itself, not even to have the name of the company on here, but it's Monteverde. Uh, this bottle is a nice size uh, and the opening is wide enough to handle any pen in your collection. I like the size of the bottle. Uh, and then this is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a rather dusky red. Uh, that it's something similar to, this is what it looks like in regard to uh, Monograppa Bordeaux or the Sailor Grenade. Uh, here it is with kind of a more of a red, the Mont Blanc William Shakespeare Velvet Red, or the Jeherban Rogue Hemonite. Uh, but it's, uh, this is what it looks like with the Red Dragon from Diamine, uh, but it's very similar to something like Noodler's Ottoman Rose. So those are just some color comparisons. And that here are a couple of different swabs on Tomoe River paper. Uh, now this is a heavier application swirled around, uh, and this is more of a traditional swab with the Q-tip. Uh, there is a little ghosting on the Q-tip swab, uh, and there are some bleed through on the heavy swab, but I applied a fair amount of ink there, so that's almost to be expected. And here is the ink. This is the Monteverde Mercury Noir uh, here with these passes, as well as the uh, lettering here, I use the Pilot Parallel in the 2.4, uh, which is uh, has a, a nice broad flat nib. And there's a whole uh, different variety of sizes of these parallels, and they're, uh, they're nice for calligraphy, uh, as well as things like this. Uh, that I'm using here some Rhodia 80 gram paper, uh, and that on this particular sample, you can see here on Rhodia paper that there is no bleed through whatsoever. Uh, I'd say that the shade is high, uh, but the sheen on this particular ink is low. Now, the three pens that I'm using for this particular review, the first one is uh, a brand new pen from a company by the name of Penlux, uh, and this is their pen called the Metallic, uh, which I'll be looking at in a couple of weeks here. Uh, and this one has a fine nib. Then for a medium nib, uh, what I have here is a Ryan Crusack Legend 14 in medium, and this is ebony wood. And then there is a, a little stone here at the top, which is really cool. Uh, and then uh, for a broader nib, I have this Sailor 1911 standard, and this nib actually is a zoom nib, which uh, angle when you angle the nib, it will produce a different a variety of uh, line sizes. Now, I'm a big film buff, and if you've watched any of my ink reviews, you know that I typically tie in a film or something film-related with ink reviews. Since the name of this ink is Mercury Noir, then I thought I would talk a little bit about film noir. Now, you might have heard of the term film noir, but what does it really mean? I mean, the literal translation in French is black film, but the meaning is more like dark film. Uh, it's a cinematic term used to describe stylish Hollywood crime dramas from the early 1940s to late 1950s. Uh, it's a term that really didn't come into use until the 1970s in looking back at this style of film in retrospect. Uh, mainly uh, when films in the 1970s started to harken back to those films in the 40s and 50s. So what makes a film noir? Uh, and for that, we're going to do some writing. So to begin with, uh, it needs a...
Uh, it needs a male anti-hero protagonist who is a hard-boiled tough guy with tragic flaws. Uh, cynical detectives, grifters, gangsters, uh, those are type of the characters that you'll see. Uh, one of my favorite films in this genre is called Double Indemnity, where an insurance agent played by Fred McMurray gets lured into a plot to murder one of his client's husbands for a uh, big insurance payday. Now for the Ryan Crusack legend, the next trope of uh, film noir is Uh, it needs a femme fatale, and I, I didn't even spell femme right, F-E-M-M-E, -M -M -E, uh, who is an attractive and seductive woman who brings disaster to any man that she has a relationship with. Uh, that in Double Indemnity, this part is played by Barbara Stanwyck. Uh, her character exploits her feminine wiles to draw McMurray's character into her plot to kill her husband. And then for the Sailor 1911S with the zoom nib, the last trope is... It has a no-nonsense, quick-witted dialogue and a high contrast use of light and shadows. Uh, that film noir uses a lot of first-person narrative and uh, tense, direct dialogue. Mr. Neff, why don't you drop by tomorrow evening around 8.30? He'll be in then. Who? My husband. You were anxious to talk to him, weren't you? Yeah, I was, but uh, I'm sort of getting over the idea, if you know what I mean. There's a speed limit in this state, Mr. Neff. 45 miles an hour. How fast was I going, officer? I'd say around 90. Suppose you get down off your motorcycle and give me a ticket. Suppose I let you off with a warning this time. Suppose it doesn't take. Suppose I have to whack you over the knuckles. Suppose I bust out crying and put my head in your shoulder. Suppose you try putting it on my husband's shoulder. That tears it. There are other elements to film noir. Uh, I like the look and the feel of these films, but uh, that's enough to film talk for today. Let's be get back to the ink. Uh, the, I do find that the flow of this ink is rather wet. Uh, in regard to drying time, uh, the, it seems like it's whether it's a medium or a fine, it's pretty much dry in 15 seconds. Uh, that this ink is lubricated so that it helps the, your nib from drying up. Uh, that this is a, a dusky red ink and I feel that it's well behaved and, and a good option if you're looking for a, a muted and softer red. Uh, I also find that this Mercury Noir kind of writes darker than the swab suggests, uh, but that's the way with a, a lot of inks. Uh, and then I also said that I enjoy Mercury Noir and it makes me really want to check out some of the other inks in Monteverde's Noir line, which I'll probably have to do. So, in regard to a water test, let's get some water on here and let's see how waterproof this ink is. And while I let it soak here for a moment, uh, here is some chromatography of the ink. You can see the ink is predominantly red, uh, and near the end here you can make out a touch of black that helps give that ink its dusky look. Um, here is the actual strip, uh, and that you can see here, better see that touch of black at the end. So let's dab this off. Uh, 
And I wouldn't call it fully waterproof, but it did last for quite some time there. It picked a bunch up, but it didn't necessarily go away 100%. Mercury Noir retails for $8 at most retailers. Uh, and then the set of 10 Noir inks can be picked up for around $70. So thanks again. Go out to Yaffa Brands for providing this ink for review. I've enjoyed taking a look at it. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.